So I broadly welcome the bill. I mean, there are a few small a number of issues that need to be addressed. So, but I do commend you for bringing this forward, Minister. Um, I suppose in terms of organ donation and transplantation, Ireland, according to the Global Observatory on Donation and Transplantation, currently we are ranked 28th um, in terms of organ donation out of 72 countries worldwide. And I suppose rates of organ donation are 18 per million population in Ireland. Compare that to Britain, it's 25. Um, so I welcome that the bill will introduce an opt-out model like that in Britain and replacing the opt-in model that currently exists. But a recent study published in the journal Anesthesia in September 2020 compared uh, deceased organ donor rates in Wales, and they introduced an opt-out uh, system in 2015 with England, which only uh, introduced it in 2020. And in three years between 2015 and 2018, consent in Wales was double uh, that seen in England, and organ, don organ number, or donor numbers have risen rapidly. Um, one organ donor can potentially save, I suppose, seven lives. Um, there are also benefits to recipient families and uh, Irish society in general, including the Irish health system and the wider economy, in promoting transportation and working towards the most effective organ donor system possible. In 2021, there were 669 people here reported to be on the overall transport, transplant waiting list. And there were 31 deaths reported of those waiting for transplant. Now, an opt-out system, I believe, will give more opportunities to those who are in need of organ donation and reduce the number of people dying while waiting for a transplant. Uh, the bill with choice and consent at its core respects individual human rights and personal autonomy and religious beliefs and retaining the right for anyone who believes that it interferes with any of these to be able to opt out uh, is very important. It also requires consultation with the person's family and that too is important. So while I support the bill, I have concerns about the administrative burden if it's not properly resourced. There is a need for significant investment in essential infrastructure and transplant surgeons and trained support staff and enhanced bereavement supports uh, to substantially increase transplantation rates. Enhanced public awareness and education are also essential. Um, another aspect of this bill strives to address concerns raised in the report of Dr Deidre Madden on post-mortem practice and procedures. Um, the Madden report came about on the back of a number of serious elevations about the retention of organs at a number of hospitals and that a number of children's organs which had been retained without their parents' consent or knowledge were also sent abroad for incineration, again without their consent or knowledge. Um, actually, one of my constituents was in contact with me recently. Her son, Pike, was uh, stillborn in June of 2016 at almost 38 weeks gestation. A year and five months after burying Pike, she was contacted by Draha de Morgue, asking her if she wanted her baby's brain and left lung. Now, she had no idea that her son's organs had been retained, and she did not get the organs back until March of 2022, which was five years and nine months after his funeral. Now, the family obviously reopened his grave and buried uh, their, their, the rest of their son. But, I mean, can you imagine how difficult it is to lose a baby in the first place? Uh, but then the heart was revisited on them all over again, with conf confronted with the fact that part of their baby's son was removed and retained. Um, so I acknowledge it's common practice to remove organs during a post-mortem, and retain these organs for further tests, but surely families should be informed that this is the case. This family still do not know why their baby son's organs were retained, and the sad part is that they are not the only family this happened to, and this was not mentioned in the post-mortem report. So it seems, you know, an, uh, one pathologist in particular was responsible for quite a number of these um, um, post-mortems, and I think answer, the, the family's concerned to serve answers from him or from the, um, the health service. And so um, this bill must ensure that something like this cannot happen again. Um, another issue that I was, um, or was brought to my attention was families negatively impacted in, by the delay in the carrying out of post-mortems. Now, many hospitals, particularly in Dublin, do not carry out post-mortems, so only carry out a post-mortem if the person passes away in the care of the hospital. So it means that there's enormous pressure on the Dublin city mortuary. Um, one family from Cavan, whose family member passed away suddenly in Dublin on a Wednesday evening, had to wait till the following Tuesday to, for his, the post-mortem to take place and then have his body released to them for burial. And that was extremely difficult on them as well. So I think it's another example of the lack of workforce planning, which is evident across many sectors in society, but particularly in relation to medical personnel. I mean, the staff I know in, in Dublin City Mortuary were trying their best, but they were inundated uh, with work and trying to cope with deaths which occurred in several hospitals as well as in the community. So once again, I broadly welcome this bill here today with the caveat that a number of issues still need to be resolved. Um, I commend the Minister for your work. And 
I especially praise the families who have been so horrifically impacted and have battled to have safeguards put in place as no other families, uh, or so that no other families will have to go through what they went through. Thank you. Mm -hmm.